Avalon Rare Metals President and CEO Don Bubar is one of the good guys in the junior exploration business. It just took some time to convince members of the Diné First Nation. In April 2005, and before taking so much as a till sample, after Avalon had acquired the Thor Lake Rare Earth Elements Project in the Northwest Territories, Bubar sent letters seeking meetings with the leaders of four Diné First Nations. Our whole philosophy was to make that uh, connection very early in the process, uh, even before we set foot on the ground, to introduce ourselves uh, to the communities as the new proponents of this project, remembering it has uh, a lot of history going back long before our involvement. Thor Lake's previous operators had left debris and other eyesores at the site that had tainted relations with the Diné communities. Predictably, Bubar's letters were ignored as were a series of phone calls. Nonetheless, he persisted. When Diné leaders finally sat down with Bubar, they were surprised to learn that Avalon had not yet applied for a land use permit from the Mackenzie Valley Land and Water Board. Every mining company the Diné communities had ever dealt with had filed for a land use permit and then offered to consult with the Diné only after being instructed to do so by the Mackenzie Valley Board. But more importantly, Bubar engaged the Diné and listened to their concerns. He learned he had fences to mend, and the Avalon team developed a strategy. It started by cleaning up the old Thor Lake camp. Avalon emptied rusty diesel tanks and used the leftover fuel in tent heaters. First Nation members were hired to tidy the bits and pieces of a trailer that had been left behind and destroyed by bears. The trailer and empty fuel barrels were removed by barge in the spring and properly disposed of in the Yellowknife dump. It was a trust-building exercise, but the impact of Bubar's next move would prove even bigger. We approached the Yellowknife's Dene First Nation and asked them if they could help us develop a name for the project that uh, was relevant in terms of the traditional use of the land by their people. The Yellowknife's Dene elders welcomed the opportunity and decided to rename the project Nechalacho, meaning the long point. With the help of David Connolly, Avalon's eyes and ears in the north, the company organized a renaming event with the Diné, including a Feed the Fire ceremony in which the Diné honor the great creator by giving thanks for the air, land, and water. Such a ceremony must be on site to be official, so Avalon flew its entourage to Nechalacho, including a premier, a senator, and numerous media personnel. The Yellowknives Diné embraced the occasion, Community elders played drums, sang songs, and spoke of change. The days of mining companies coming in and exploring our lands and leaving the legacy of environmental and social problems is over. Avalon took another step in partnership building by providing job training early on. Inspired by Avalon Vice President of Exploration Bill Mercer and guided by Connolly, Avalon developed a drill helper training course with the aid of the Northwest Territories Mine Training Society and several drilling companies. Run through Aurora College and based on the Common Core training module, 11 First Nations members enrolled. All of them graduated as certified drill helpers. We got some of them employed with us and uh, they're good workers and we, were, we feel this was a great success in uh, raising the employability level of people in the communities around our project. Avalon offers day tours of its drill site, which also receives and passes regular government inspections for environmental compliance. Avalon uses biodegradable drilling lubricants and has built corduroy roads to keep tractors from forming ruts by pulling drill rigs back and forth over the permafrost. Ideas like these often come from Avalon's three-person advisory committee. The group teams Aboriginal Miss Nobby Cree Chief Glenn Nolan with a metallurgist and a biologist they must be providing some good advice, too, because CBC North has done four positive stories on Avalon. Avalon remains a long way from producing rare earth elements, but tonight, by winning the PDAC Award for Environment and Social Responsibility, Avalon Rare Metals is proof that good guys sometimes do finish first. <laughs>